Hey there guys, in this video we're going to be talking some more about Phantom Thief Zon. So this is something of a follow-up to the previous video where I want to expand on a few points and I also want to clarify some information because over the past day I have read you know discussions on Reddit, Discord, all that kind of fun stuff and I've definitely been misquoted a few times on some of the comments I've been reading. So I want to clarify right up front at the start of the video. I did not say Phantom Thief Zon was like a weak or a bad unit. I'm seeing quite a few comments on um, you know social media, that kind of stuff, where like Sinzar said Zon is terrible. That is not the case. I did not say Zon is a terrible unit. I think Zahn is very strong for what he does. He is probably one of the best breakers in the game at the current time. If there was a Dark Visions coming out tomorrow, Zahn would very likely be on the rank one party. So, yes, I do recognize and definitely think Zahn is a strong unit and good at some things. Um, you know, in the previous video, I kind of focused mostly on the things I don't like about Zahn because at the end of the day, he is a disappointment to me personally. And I'll, 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 I'll talk more about that in this video in a few minutes. But I just want to make it very, very clear for the people that are like going and saying, Sinzar said Zahn is useless or Zahn is terrible. That, I did not say that. That is not the case. Um, Zahn is disappointing. Zahn is very overpriced. Absolutely. Absolutely. But is Zahn like a terrible unit that will never see use? Not at all. Never said that. So, yeah. You know, Zahn... And I even said in the video, I'd love to have Zahn. I'm going to use all my tickets on pulling him. I just don't feel that he's worth 82,000 Lapis. I still feel that way, and I didn't spend any Lapis on him. If you saw my Vision World video, where at the end of the video, I went and used some tickets on Zahn, like I said I would, and I got him. Um, it was nice. You can watch that in the light party clear at the end of the video. I used some tickets. I get myself a Zahn in a few tickets. As I said in the first video, I want Zahn. He's good at what he does. Also, one more correction about Zahn. So during the first video, I made that like 20 minutes after the data mine came out. I calculated his damage on my spreadsheet very quickly. I overlooked one of the modifiers for Clash of Wills. So here's a quick update on his Clash of Wills damage. Yeah, I had the modifier slightly lower in that video. It's been corrected. Like, like I said, I was getting the video out to you as soon as possible. I overlooked it. It was pointed out to me. I fixed it. So his Clash of Wills damage is slightly higher than I showed in the previous video. Uh, the, the Dark Visions damage is exactly the same. That was correct. But yeah, I, I overlooked a small modifier for his Clash of Wills damage. But there you go. So, so yeah. Zahn is fine at what he does. Hopefully I've made that clear. So hopefully I don't see any more comments on Reddit where people are saying, Sinzar said Zahn is useless. That is not the case. Now we're going to talk more about why I'm disappointed in Zahn. So, you know, this might be a little bit of a broken record at this point, but I'm going to go into further detail on why I think the new Zahn not having parts of his old 7-star matters to me. And again, at the end of the day, this is my personal opinion. This is not like an encyclopedic fact or anything. If you disagree with me, by all means, make your own decision. If you love Zahn, go 82k for him or 76k, whatever the, the most efficient path is, and get him. Or use one ticket, use a video summon, get him, and use him. I use tickets. I got him. I'm sure I'm going to use him in the future. So there you go. But what would I have liked to see in Zahn, and what would have made me be willing to go directly into an 82,000 pity? Let's talk about what I was hoping Zahn would have, and why it matters to me. Because something else I've seen on Reddit 
is people just like being really dismissive of things like Hyde. Quite a few comments are like, oh, Hyde is so niche, that never matters. Sinzar is just a dummy for saying Hyde is unfortunate that Zahn doesn't have it. I'm gonna prove you wrong in this video, but let's go ahead and go over all the points. So, some other things, FYI, I forgot to mention about the original Zahn that we don't have on the new Zahn, is the old Zahn, you know, again, we're kind of like nitpicking, but these are things that matter. The old Zahn also had perfect dispel in his kit. Um, right here, remove all buffs from enemy on his black mirror. Zahn had perfect dispel, the new one does not. Something else the old Zahn had, and this has definitely mattered in quite a few combats, is uh, the mystical mirror. Where is it? I'm going to find it. Give me a second. Just these mirrors are very long, long on the wiki. Uh, mystical mirror. Nullify next spell cast. Basically the Nethysite effect. Another very useful tool that we use very often in, con in, in content. You know, how many times do I have to say in content? If you don't have Nethysite, you can use Ash's STMR. You've heard that in videos many, many times. So I don't want to see anyone on Reddit being like, Nethysite never matters because you're wrong. It matters often, often. We're using that to stop some kind of, usually an AoE dispel, but it could stop a lot of stuff. Anyway, the old Zahn had that, the new one does not. So wouldn't that have been nice to have that on his multicast? Like the old Zahn, you wouldn't have to waste an entire turn on a unit using Ash's STMR or the Nethysite Materia. Anyway, those are just more things I overlooked. And something else I overlooked for the old Zahn that the new one does not have is the ability to copy from um, enemies, being able to use Black Mirror and Reciprocal Mirror to copy enemy status effects to Zahn. The new one cannot do that either. And these are all things that I was really looking to use as a toolkit for the new Zahn because as I've said, these are just like tools in the kit that can definitely come into effect sometimes. So you might be asking yourself, well, what does it matter copying effects from enemies to you? Let me show you, and this is really old at this point, let's go back in the past to the Clash of Wills with Kairos. We're going back to the first season of Clash of Wills in I think 2022 or something. It's pretty old at this point. But do you remember Kairos? And who remembers? I still remember this. This, is, this kind of stuff is always in my mind when I'm looking for like outside the box strategies. Who remembers the buff that Kairos used on himself back in the day? Let's scroll to Kairos's kit. Now imagine if we had Zahn at this time period. Kairos used, where is it? It's in here somewhere. Demonic Strength, a 625% attack buff to himself. Now, if our new Zahn had the toolkit of the old Zahn that could steal enemy buffs, the, the new Zahn would be able to, for example, steal this 625% attack buff and then share it to the party. That's 225% more than you. That's basically an overdrive for the entire party. Well, for physical units. Now imagine if we get a boss in the future that has this. Same thing for the old Zahn being able to steal killers off of an enemy. Most of the time, killers on an enemy are small. But I, I, I went through, the, I went through the, the game data and looked it up. Some of the, some of the enemies, like for example, this is an, again, this is old content. This is an old um, either EX boss or a crown boss, I don't remember. But this guy does a 300% human killer buff on himself. Zahn could have stolen that and shared that to the party. That's more than any buff in the game. Also, if you remember the um, Wicked Queen Biaka, um, she had, this is, this is getting questionable at this point, but she had her human killer buff was bugged for a time period. It was, it was undeclared in the data, meaning it rolled over to infinite, and that was the reason that Biaka if you didn't dispel her human killer, would just OTK anyone in the game and you would take literally the, the, the 10 billion damage cap um, because Biaka had a, uh, what's it called? 
an unlimited human killer buff. And if we had Zahn at the time, um, I, I guess technically speaking, you could have taken the seven star Zahn and stolen it that way. Um, I don't think anyone really did that, but you could in the future if that ever happens. Now, this, this that was a bug and it was fixed. They eventually declared her human killer to be 100% and it was no longer infinite. But while it was infinite, Zahn could have stolen that infinite human killer, shared it to the party, and you would have you would have you would have, you would have you know OTK'd Bianca, the, the 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 evil queen trial. So that's the kind of stuff that that's the kind of fun, awesome stuff that I live for playing this game. I love those kind of cool strategies, like you know being able to to snatch this six hundred and twenty five percent attack buff off of a Clash of Wills boss and giving it to our party, how awesome would that be? That is something you don't do in everyday combat. It's very fun for the game. And now the last thing that, again, I'm seeing people on Reddit being very dismissive of Hyde and saying Hyde never matters. It's so niche. Who cares about Hyde? I was going to go and look up some of my old videos where I used Hyde in strategies. Um, most of the time, you use Hyde to avoid an AoE dispel, and Zahn will preserve buffs that way. Either temporary buffs, or for action economy, you don't really have time to rebuff everything. So Zahn will hide and keep that whole stack to be shared on the burst turn, stuff like that. Um, but then I remembered one of the best examples ever of Hyde being useful. So the next time you see someone on Reddit or Discord making a joke about how useless Hyde is, let's go back to the Secret of Mana Vision world, and we're going to look at Resonant's video, where Resonant uses Zahn's one-turn Hyde to earn himself 50,000 Lapis by getting rank 1. So let's just real quick, let's skip ahead a little bit, and we will show... Go to the lore right here, where Resnit is using Petrify on his party and a one-turn hide to control, and uh, he is using a one-turn hide to control the flow of combat and petrifying. And this this is the strategy that earned Resnit rank one in this vision world. And I love Resnit, so this is not an insult to him, but he's not really like a big known whale or anything. He got rank one by using an outside of the box strategy, and he was able to out damage and out rank every single big whale on the server by using a very smart strategy, utilizing something like a one turn hide with his relatively, you know, cheaper account. I'm not, I'm not insulting him by, by any means. I, I'm complimenting him by using brain power to overcome like you know whale accounts and he got rank one and this earned him 50,000 lapis by using a one turn hide so yes while it most certainly is not something that you would see in everyday combat you wouldn't go to every single fight using a one turn hide as your primary strategy but sometimes having that in the toolkit is incredibly valuable and it opens up these strategies that let you go outside the box and in my opinion have way more fun with the game and be very effective so the next time someone says hide is useless tell them sure it may be useless but it earns someone 50,000 lapis by getting rank one in vision world or dark visions this is a vision world but it was basically a dark visions uh, setup so there you go there you go so I just wanted to, you know, defend my position when I say that I'm disappointed that Zahn lost a lot of his cool abilities. That's the reason. Because I was looking forward to Phantom Thief Zahn bringing back that kind of awesome gameplay. You know, I'm a little bit bored of the whole game revolving around do a modifier buff, use a limit burst, and that's Dark Visions. You know... And even Clash of Wills, for the most part, is kind of devolving into that, where we just like do some setup, we fill the morale gauge, we do a burst, and we OTK the boss from 100%. It's not fun to me. It's not fun to me. 
I want to go back to this kind of stuff. Really cool outside the box strategies. I want to be able to steal these really cool abilities off of bosses. I want to be able to do things like Mystical Mirror to where we can net the site and stop the bosses. I don't want to look it up again. You know, I want to be able to do one turn hides. And when I heard Zahn announced, I was looking forward to doing all of that again. And then we see his kit, and he is basically just a really efficient breaker, which is powerful. It's powerful. Don't get me wrong. And Zahn's good. I got him. I'm happy I have him. But he could have been so much more. And if he was, I would have happily given him 82,000 lapis. Okay, I wouldn't have been happy about it, but I would have done it. I would, I would have been unhappy that I spent so much, but I would have spent 82,000 if we had the tools of his 7-star. Okay. Once again, though, Zahn is still useful. I did not call him a bad unit. I called him a disappointing unit. See you in a bit.